Good morning, everyone. Our first Bible reading is from Isaiah 43, from verse 10, from verse 6 to 10. Sorry, from verse 10 to 13. You are my witness, declared the Lord, and my servant from whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me. No God was formed, nor will there be anyone after me. Even I am the Lord, and apart from there is no savior. I reveal and save and proclaim. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witness, declare the Lord. I am God. Yes, and from ancient days, I am no one. And no one can deliver you out of the hand when I act so you can be served. Our second reading is from Isaiah 44 and from verse 16, from verse 16 to 9, from verse 6 to 9, sorry. Isaiah 44 from verse 6 to 19, sorry. This is what the Lord says. Israel, King, Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first, I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare, lay out before me. What has happened since I established my ancient people? What is yet to come? Yes, let him foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witness. Is there any God beside me? No, there is no other rock I know, no, not one. All who make idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Those who speak upon them are blind. They are ignorant to their own shame. Who shape a God and curse an idol, which can profit him nothing. He and his kind of all put them to shame. Craftsmen are nothing, but men let them all come together and take their stand. They will be brought down to terror and family. The blacksmith takes a tool and work with it in the cold. He shape an idol with hammers. He forgive it with his mighty of his arm. He get angry, he get hungry and lose his strength. He drink no water and go faint. The carpenter measure with a lime and make an outline with a marker. He thrusts it out with his chisels and make it with compassions. He shaped it in the form of man and of man and all his glory. That he may dwell in a shrine, he cut down the cedars or perhaps take a cypress or, or oat. He let it grow among the trees of the forest or planted a pine and the rain may grow it. It is man's fluid for burning. Some of it takes and some warm himself. He, kind, he kindles a fire and bake bread, but he also fashion a god and worship it. He make an idol and bow down for it. Half of the woods burn in the fire. Over it prepare his meal. He roasts his meal and eats its fill. He also warm himself and said, ha ha, I am warm. I see the fire. From the rest of the makes a god is idol. He bow down to it and worship. He pray to it and say, Save me, you are my God. They know nothing, they understand nothing. Their eyes are plastered over so that they cannot see, and their minds are closed so that they cannot understand. Verse 19, and where we stop. No one stops to think. No one has the knowledge or understanding to say half of it. I use for fluid, and I even bake bread over its cold. I roasted meat, and I ate. Shall I make a desertable things what is left? Shall I bow down to a block of woods? Here is a reading of the part of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Has people got their Bibles? Can I see your Bibles? Have you opened to the chapter? Do you know what was reading and what was true? Can you find it? Has people got a Bible? I'll review it on your phone. 
I tell you, it is so important for you to follow the scriptures so that you can know what God is saying to you. Because God speaks through his words. It is important to know where in the Bible God is saying this so that when you leave from here today, you can take it and read it again to help yourself to grow in the understanding and in the knowledge of who God is and who you are in him. As um, Martin said, my name is Sylvia. And I'm not talking about, I'm not going to talk about my education. I'm not going to talk about where, you know, how old was I when married and all that. I want to talk about my credential in God before I became a child of God, he rescued me from the power of darkness. He rescued me from the kingdom of darkness. And he has brought me into the kingdom of his dear son, his kingdom of light. I have nothing good that I have contributed to Christ upon the cross, but my sin, my sin. That's my contribution. Nothing else. Nothing to glory in. Nothing to say, I did this that was good. Nothing. So my sin was placed upon him. And that was all because God has ordained it. God has ordained it for us. Not for himself. Not for himself, but for us. And we talked about his love, we sing about his love, and that is so true, that God loves us so much that the only person that could suffice him, could take our place, was his one and only son. Not an angel, not Gabriel, but is one son, nothing else. And therefore, when we become a child of God, we give him everything. We give him everything. Because he gave us everything. He held back nothing. He withhold nothing. And he asks of us for us to give him our hearts. Because when we give him our hearts, our mind follows, our thoughts follows, everything else follows. God declared in his word that was just read. This was God speaking, by the way. It wasn't Isaiah. God said, before me. People said, oh, do I hear God speaking? Today, God said, before me. That is God speaking. If you want to hear God speaking, go to his word. Read his word. And the more you read and study the word of God, the more you will hear God speak to you. Because he speaks to you through his word, like he's doing this morning to us. God said in Hebrew, Today, if you will hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Don't put up a front against him. But in humility... Receive my word, because my word is profitable for eternity. My word is that's transformed you, transformed your thoughts, transform your imagination, transform your behavior, your attitude. Everything about us, the word of God, 
transform us when we humbly accept his words. God said today to his church, to his people, I don't know what message he's preaching at St. Luke's or the Pentecostal church, but here today, August the 8th, 2024, this is what God is saying to his church here today. Before me, there was no God formed. Neither shall there be any after me. There's no savior. There's no redeemer. But me. And therefore God is asking his children to trust him. To rely on him. To depend on him. That he is able to do more than we can imagine, more than we can pray, more than we can ask of him. God is faithful. We declare that so many times. And therefore we must trust his faithfulness, that he is able to bring through what he said he will do. God said what he means, and he means what he said. He never go back on his word. He never change his mind. What he has ordained from the beginning, it will be fulfilled. And no matter the commotion that is happening in our world today, even within the church, don't get up in arms about it. Don't get yourself in a tiffy because you're so worried. Everything's going to fall apart. God is not in control. God has got it together. God has got it together. And it will always got it together. So don't get yourself all worked up and worried and stressed out. What you need to do is pray. Your kingdom come because it will come. It will come. His will will be done. It will be done. He said, I am God. You are my witnesses. And when he said that, he was saying this to his people. Israel is people. Because there was so many idols, so many false gods that were worshipping. They, they got themselves so caught up in the affairs, the things that around them, the nation around them. Instead of trusting the true and living God, they tried to bring other gods in, putting other God beside the true and living God. And God is saying, not so. Not so with me. I am one and that's it. I am not one among ten. God is not like your football idol. God is not like your pop star idol. God is not like your favorite football team that you support. God is not that. God is not your favorite, like your favorite program. God said, I am God. And there is none beside me. There is no other beside me. And the question is this. Who have you got beside God? Who, who has captured your attention beside God? Who has pulled you away from the love of God? What it is that is dragging you away from him. God said it's idols. It is an idol. And therefore he asked his people, his children, put it away. Clean up yourself. Get rid of. Because I am the only one that can deliver, that can heal. I know many people are sick. But I want to say, when we come in God's presence, we must always come with expectations. When we come, gather together, don't just come to hear about God. Come to meet with him. Come to meet with God. 
come to meet with God. So as you come and as you worship, your mind is fixed up on the true and living God. Your heart is fixed up on the true and living God. And the Bible said that God inhabits the praises of his people. Do not come to be entertained, the God of entertainment. That's not what God desire. God desire that his people come to worship him. The Bible said, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Hear, O church, the Lord your God is one God. Love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Love him. He said, don't have any other God beside me. God is a jealous God, very. Jealous for himself, jealous for his name. And it's not jealousy as we think of it, jealousy. He's not going to take a knife and come and stab you. He's not going to poison you. He's not going to run you over down with a car. That's not, what, that's, not jealous, that's not God. But he's jealous for us. Because you know that the more we draw close to him, the more that we love him, the more that we are becoming like him. The more we are becoming like him. And God is declaring to us, there's no other God. He's our redeemer. The first and the last. We have heard that before, the first and the last. I am the first and the last. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. Jesus said it. He said, I'm the first and the last. I was dead, but I'm alive. So here is the essence of Jesus and God the same. Same God. God the Father, God the Son. And God said it again. Beside me there is no God. I proclaim as I do. Can any God proclaim as I do? Can any God t tells you the beginning and the end? It's all in the Bible. If you want to know the beginning and the end, you don't have to go to no fortune tellers. You have to know reading your horoscope. You don't have to go to no spiritualists to find out the beginning and the end of anything. You don't have to go and contact the dead. It's all in scriptures. God already told us the beginning from the end. Go to his word. Read his word, for in his word there is life. Is anyone that can declare as I do? Can anyone tell the beginning from the end? The answer is no. Because everyone else are telling porkies. And they're taking your money with it. But God tells you the truth. When we read in the Bible... If you're reading the book of Isaiah, it's full of what God has said about the beginning, the end, and the future. He talks about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, how he was going to come into the world, born of a virgin, so specific. God is very specific, precise. He was going to be born of a virgin in the town where he was going to be born. It told me that. He tells you about his crucifixion. How he was going to be crucified. How he's going to be marred or he's going to be mocked. How he's going to be spit on. And all that was in the book of Isaiah and Christ wasn't even born yet. So God said, trust me. Don't trust idols. Trust me. Because I know the beginning and the end of all things. Isn't that wonderful? That God asked us his people... It's time to trust him and to put away those idols. And sometimes these idols are not a stack of wood, but the things that capture our attention more than God, that is an idol. God is second best. The time I give to God is that. The time I give to whatever I, that. 
That's an idol. Very subtle. But God knows. God knows the chambers of our hearts. He sees the chambers of our hearts. He sees everything. There's nothing hidden from him. And that is why when we come to him, come clean. Say, God, you know what? I have been trusting in the horoscope. I've been trusting in spiritualist. I've been trusting in those things. I, I depend on them. I rely on them. I've been trusting in contacting the dead. This is what God said. Put them away and trust me. God said, you are my witnesses. We today are God witnesses. That God said, whatever he said he is, that's who he is. Period. Nothing had to it. Nothing take away from it. Sometimes we try to make God in a God that we think should be a God. We're trying to trim him down, cut bits off here and bits off there, because we want him to be our God. No, God wants to be God, who he said he is in his word. He's omnipotent. He's eternal. He inhabit, inhabits eternity. That's who God is, and God wants to remain as he said he is. Not for us to try and change him to suit ourselves. When you read the scriptures, it tells you that they make this idol and they fall down and worship it. They pray to it. They say, deliver me, you are my God. I want you to notice, and that's why I said to you, read your Bible. I want you to notice the way they approach their idols, they bow down to it. Do we bow down to our God? When last have we bowed down and bow our knees before our God? When last have we prostrate ourselves before our God? When last? And yet, those who worship idols, you know the Lord said to me, Say to my people, go to the Hindu temple across the road and observe how they worship. How they worship. Go to the Muslims, to the mosque. See how they worship. Observe how they worship. And he said, ask my people, how do you worship me? How do you worship? Do we bow down to the almighty God, the awesome God we declare him to be, we sing about? Do we prostrate ourselves before the almighty God? I'm praying that the Holy Spirit, as we listen today, will give us the capacity to receive who God is and worship him as he is and not try to change him. In 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 3, this is what he says about some of the gods. He said, many people in the last days shall be lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves rather than God, Lovers of self rather than God. Lovers of pleasure rather than God. And you know, he wasn't speaking about the world. He was actually speaking about the church. It was the church he was speaking about. Lovers of self than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure than lovers of God. And today I pray that we will do our dealing with God. You, we know where we are. Be honest. God, God knows where we are, and we know where we are. And therefore, 
to our dealing with him. I pray that when you leave here today, you will not just forget God. Well, let the word of God dwell in you, dwells in us, transforming us day by day, so that we will become the people of God. He said, whoever you worship, you will become like that. And then since we said we worship God, then we should become like God. In Jesus' name, amen.